Hi and welcome to this new video on the Mira Analyzer. Today we'll focus on the live version introducing the system analysis feature. In audio we often need to understand how our signal is being altered whether by a piece of equipment or the acoustics of a space. In such cases we compare the output signal to the input signal to determine the transfer function of the system. Keep in mind this type of analysis is only valid if the system being measured is both linear and time invariant. In Mira Live, we have a factory layout called Live System Tuning. Let's quickly go over its structure. On the left side, you'll find several key menus, the microphone list, the session list, the captures listed within the selected session, and a signal generator. On the right side, we have four scopes, an RTA, real-time analyzer, a transfer function plot showing both magnitude and phase, and an impulse response display. Before going further, we'll need to set up our I.O. configuration dot. In this example, we're measuring the frequency response of a stereo system at the listening point. To do this, I'll send pink noise from the analyzer to each loudspeaker and record the left and right transfer functions. A measurement microphone is placed in front of the speakers, connected to a preamp, which then feeds into an ADC and arrives at channel 2 of my audio interface. To ensure a proper analysis, we need a reference signal. The best practice is to output the same pink noise through the DAC and then feed it back into the preamp and ADC chain. This method reduces the effect of most equipment, allowing the measurement to more accurately reflect the loudspeaker's true response. In the I.O. setup of the analyzer, we will select our audio interface. Go to the signal generator section and set the output channels to feed our equipment. Set the maximum number of channels to one. In the channel specifications tables, set the first line to the input channel for the loopback signal. For me, this is channel one and mark it as TF ref. Set the second line to the microphone input and label it as microphone. Now that the IO is configured, I'll create a new project and name it accordingly. With everything set up, I'm ready to start the noise generator. As the transfer function builds in real time, our delay finder algorithm identifies the time offset between the reference signal and the microphone. Once a stable value is found, it's important to apply this delay before capturing the data. Now I'll click the capture button to store the transfer function curve. Let's repeat the process for the other channel. At this stage, we can begin analyzing how the room affects the loudspeaker's performance. Before we conclude, let's go over a few additional points. In the Session Captures menu, selecting a capture will display both the impulse response and the coherence curve. The impulse response is the time domain equivalent of the frequency response. By comparing the two curves, we can see if the impulse responses are aligned. If they aren't aligned, it likely indicates that the listening position is off-center. The coherence curve measures the reliability of the data. A higher coherence value means a more trustworthy measurement. Low coherence is typically caused by delays or excessive noise. And there you go. Thanks for watching this video. As always, don't forget to subscribe and like the video to stay updated on the latest Mira Analyzer content. For more in-depth information, please refer to our user guide, which offers detailed instructions and tips to help you maximize your use of our tools. Stay tuned for our next video, where we'll continue exploring the advanced features and capabilities of the Mira Analyzer Suite.